All right, I've found a comfortable spot, warm or cool, depending on what season it is. Uh, I'd like to talk about something that I've been speaking about for, for many years and doing for even more, and that is the berry smoothie. Uh, I watched it happen, the American obesity epidemic, and it didn't used to be that way. And I won't go into the history of that because that's not the point right now. But uh, one of the problems is that uh, breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. That, <laughs> that was a slogan uh, invented by Dr. Kellogg to promote his cereal. And it was exploited, this idea of breakfast is the most important meal of the day, by Bernays, uh, Edward Bernays, who was an advertising uh, public relations guy, and he did it, uh, he used that slogan to promote the bacon and eggs industry. And uh, Grape Nuts in the 40s, uh, it was one of their radio slogans, uh, great breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, yeah, advertising, but so what? Maybe it, maybe it is, but it isn't. Uh, yeah, I won't go into all of that about the all night long you've been burning fat and your insulin has been falling into a healthy range. And then the first thing you do when you get up is spike your insulin with cereal and orange juice. So just it's, it's not conducive to the goals that most people are going to have nowadays, which is to shed the body fat. All right, well, you do need a breakfast because breakfast is just the first meal of the day. It doesn't mean at 8 o'clock in the morning. It means whenever you break your fast, you're having breakfast. We don't think of it that way, but just to be practical. Um, a way to get some nutrients into your bloodstream is the berry smoothie. Superb nutrition. Absolutely superb. There, there's no better. There's, there's as good as, uh, but there's no better nutrition than berries. Uh, blueberry, blackberry, raspberry, strawberry, those are the easy ones. Uh, they, berries are the only food that was invented to be eaten. Everything else is the body of something. Celery is the body of a celery stalk. Uh, a, a leaf it has a function and you can also eat it and grass and meat and eggs and milk it's all well milk but it's all invented to be uh, something uh, to the, be the body of something milk <laughs> probably shouldn't have brought that up now it's a whole other discussion and it's really good it's fantastic if you're a baby cow and again I won't go I won't go into that it's you know it's controversial and I don't mind that one bit at all but uh, uh, not right here, not, not right now. Uh, so the berry smoothie. It's the deal that the plant makes with the animal. Spread my seed and have some nutrition as a reward. Eat my berry, spread my seed. Uh, okay, I'll tell the story. Uh, many, many years ago, I was in Australia and lived there. And we, uh, we went out to the town dump, but it was just the, not the town's dump, but it was a dump, and had some stuff to unload. And over in the trees there, uh, just absolutely beautiful tomato, tomatoes. And I said, what? What are these beautiful, beautiful to to tomatoes growing here in the dump? Uh, it turns out that that was where somebody, well, people, emptied their septic tanks. And the tomatoes that they had eaten passed through, and the seeds eventually germinated after the septic material was uh, composted, and beautiful tomatoes. Well, that's the deal that the berries make, that the, that the plant makes with the animal. Uh, 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 and it's a fair deal. It's honest. It's got integrity to it. Uh, you, you really do benefit. Uh, you are paid a fair wage by doing the work for the plant. So berries, uh, the idea of it is uh, 
Uh, it's, it's a sweet idea. All right. So put that aside right now, the, the ethics of it or the philosophy of it, and let's just look at the practicalities. Uh, very low glycemic load. Again, with, as with everything, there's a lot to be said about glycemic load. I use the term glycemic load rather than glycemic index because it has to do with the ease of the math. Uh, a glycemic load is how much you're likely to eat. Glycemic index is uh, how much, how much, a, 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 how big a, a glycemic, a sugar, blood sugar effect there would be with X number of grams. Uh, and that's a little more math than people want to do. So glycemic load is a nice way of using it. Berries have a very low glycemic load. In other words, it affects your blood sugar very little. Uh, And if it affects your blood sugar only a little, then it affects your insulin only a little. And just to kind of back into that topic, the reason almost everybody has visible body fat that they do not want, there's a single major reason, and that is elevated insulin levels. Insulin will do its job. Its job is to take energy out of your bloodstream and put it into your cells. And it's not gonna be your muscle cells. By which I mean, yeah, sure, it's gonna be your muscle cells, but how big are they gonna get? Well, I want, I want it really, really big. Yeah, you want it that way, but that's not how it happens. What, what has an unlimited potential for growth is not your muscle cells, your muscle fiber. It is your fat cells. They will grow and grow and grow and grow, and there's probably a limit, but you haven't found it. So if your insulin is high, it's going to take your blood sugar or fat or whatever the energy is that's appropriate for the, for the low, for the uh, storage, and it's going to put it in your fat cells. Now, fat is always coming out of your fat cells, uh, and it wants to be in your bloodstream to go to your muscle cells and give you energy that you can use. That's the, that's the way it should work. Well, how it actually works is you've been eating, uh, frankly, inappropriately, you have spiked your blood sugar, it has raised your insulin, and now your insulin is going to do its job. It's going to take energy out of your bloodstream and put it away as fat. Well, you just took some fat and put it in your bloodstream so that you can have energy. But insulin is high, so it takes that fat, you just, you just took it out, and it puts it back in. In other words, fat is trapped. As long as there's insulin, elevated insulin, in your bloodstream, you're going to be fat. You can't not be fat. You really can't use your fat. It's trapped. It's like the prison. And the prisoners get out, but the guards are there and put them right back in. And they win. Uh, that's the vicious cycle of a higher glycemic load diet. You want your, your blood sugar and therefore your insulin levels to be moderate, to be appropriate. Generally speaking, blood glucose is for your brain. Excuse me. Uh, it's brain food. And there's all kinds of stuff which I'm absolutely not going to go into the, uh, about, uh, about uh, uh, ketones and ketogenesis and the keto diet. And I'll just say here, and if you don't like to hear it, well, some other time we'll have a talk about it. We've, I talk about it a fair bit. Uh, not, a, not a good diet. Uh, not successful not healthful. Won't go into that. We, I, I, very lean guy. I won't say how lean, but pretty lean. Uh, I'm tempted to talk about it, but I got to have a little bit of discipline in this conversation. Uh, I, lean guy, I'm always just about burning fat. Fat is my preferred, my body's prefer, preferred fuel. All night long, you know, I eat a pretty big last meal of the day. It's not late uh, for just good practice. That's for another time. But a uh, pretty big meal, and uh, I get a little fat. And then all night long and all the next day, I'm burning that fat. So it's a, a very mild cycle. And when I say I get fat after the meal, uh, not even half a pound, a quarter of a pound of fat, if you, you know, it's negligible. I, I make it, I store it away, and I release it all night long. That's what keeps me warm at night. It's what it's for. So uh, 
the reason I can do that, aside from exercise, you know, that, that regulates insulin, regulates body fat, but it's my diet, it's my nutrition. Uh, and a big part of that is the berry smoothie. So if you have a berry smoothie, uh, not first thing in the morning, not first thing, but first meal, and it's not all at once, it's sip it across the day, however long you want. But it's your, you're putting beautiful, beautiful nutrition into your bloodstream. And uh, you're not spiking your, your blood sugar. So that instead of trapping your fat, all night long you've been trying to liberate, and maybe you have, you're liberating your fat uh, because your insulin has now gone down into you know, appropriate levels, which is just about negligible. Uh, and fat comes out. You worked hard to make that fat. Your body digested the food, the, your liver did the work, your blood's pumped, your heart worked to get it to its place, your body made the insulin to do its job. And good, now you've taken this very valuable resource, fat, and put it into your cells so that it can be used not very long later. Uh, uh, it's a solar battery. You've taken energy, stored it for later use. It's a very good thing. All night long you've been lowering your blood sugar and burning fat. So the first thing you want to do when you get up is spike your blood sugar. That's what these typical meals do, the, the sugary or not, not bacon and eggs, but most of the other. So the berry smoothie, what is it? Four ingredients. Berries, frozen berries from whatever store. Uh, they're cheaper, they're just as good, generally speaking. Uh, fresh is not really fresh. It's, uh, it's been shipped and stored and sitting in the warehouse and sitting in the, you know, it's a few days old. When they pick the berries uh, and they f ship them to the factory and flash freeze them, the time stops. So they're, there's a way that they're fresher. Th enough about that. So berries, uh, good fat, which is going to be either flaxseed oil, and there's a lot to say about that, or omega-3 fish oil, and there's a lot to say about, say about that. Uh, uh, I will only say uh, fresh, and that's all I'm going to say about that right now. Uh, omega-3 fish oil, and then maybe a scoop of protein powder. Uh, and now you've got the three macronutrients, the three calorie sources. You've got a good protein, and not whey for almost everybody, because whey spikes your insulin. That's why bodybuilders and skinny teenage boys don't mind having whey because its job is to make you bigger. It's what whey does. It makes baby cows into big cows or bulls. Uh, uh, so rice protein, pea protein, mixed vegetable protein, not a lot, No, certainly not, not more than you're planning on having 30 grams per serving. Maybe your berry smoothie is going to be two servings. Okay, well, 60 grams, but you're not going to have, you'll have half now and then half considerably later. Uh, and then the final thing is, uh, uh, I think I said it, a protein, uh, uh, fat, and the berries, and then water. Not rice, not, not rice milk, not soy milk, not almond milk, not Coca-Cola, water. You don't need any of those other beverages. You're already drinking a beverage. Oh, I don't like the taste. Well, you know, that's because you have jaded taste buds. And, uh, you know, you have something a little more natural and more less uh, uh, stimulatory, and you, you'll get used to it. So that's the berry smoothie. Uh, I've touched on it very lightly, but uh, uh, sip it. Don't drink, don't gulp it. It's a meal. And meals are not meant to be devoured like, like you're a wolf. Uh, you sip it, you savor it. It should take you as long to drink the smoothie as it takes you to eat that amount of berries. And it should take you that amount, not, it should take you a while. You don't, you don't uh, gobble the berries. So that's something about the berry smoothie. If you do that, people lose fat like you wouldn't believe, and that's what I'm going to say about that.